Hi, this is John C. Murphy for No Part Dark. In this video, I will demonstrate how to draw a cartoon sponge in Autodesk Sketchbook. Let's start by adjusting the canvas size. Under Image, Canvas Size, I like a 4 to 3 ratio, so I'll use 600 by 800. Note that if you choose something much bigger or smaller, then the sizes that I suggest during this video for the various line thicknesses will not be valid for your drawing. Next, we need to set up our color palette. I've already done this by going under File, Add Image, navigating to a reference image and importing it. After that, I just created a new swatch set and used the eyedropper tool to sample the image's colors and set up the necessary swatches. Note that in order to get the eyedropper tool, you just hit the Alt key, which is true for most painting programs, Alt for eyedropper and spacebar for the hand tool. Once you're done, you can delete the reference image. Now let's paint the background layer. Select the paintbrush tool and adjust it to a large size. Note that to resize, you don't have to keep coming over here to the brush properties thing. If you just hold down the B for brush key and drag the cursor, this will resize the brush for you. So increase the brush to a large size, select the sand color, and paint the bottom of the image. We need to add some grunge to the ground, so select the black color, then on the brushes palette, under presets, find a brush that looks like a bunch of little dots. Then open the brush properties panel and decrease the opacity to less than 20%. Making sure that the brush is nice and big, draw some dots. Going back to the regular paintbrush, select the sea blue color and fill in the upper part of the image. Next we need to draw some perspective lines for our character. So in the layers palette, add layer, then set the brush to ballpoint pen, hold down the B key and resize to 2.0. Choose the black color and hold down the space bar to allow you to zoom out a bit. The reason I do this is anatomical, to allow my hand a short stroke on the vertical lines, because I find that vertical lines tend to be the most difficult to draw straight. Normally I would rotate the image slightly to make this easier, but because we're doing perspective lines here, it's really important to get their alignment correct, so I leave the canvas in the upright position. Notice how his figure is almost always curved slightly backward to make him appear more dynamic, and the side flares out a bit as you go upward. Put some perspective lines in for the eyes. Drop the layer opacity a bit, and we're ready to get going. So new layer, choose the paintbrush tool, set it to black, change it from freehand to oval mode. We need it thick, so go to 4.0. Now draw an ellipse that is slightly shy of a true circle, with the long axis being vertical. V to rotate, resize as needed, and move into position. Duplicate the layer, V to move it over. Now you might think that we would want the fill with white at this point, but it is actually better to create a separate layer for the fill, so we can sandwich the other elements of the eye between them. So new layer, grab this handle thing to move it below the eye outline layers and use this alternate paint bucket tool, which is called the Flood Fill All Visible Layers paint bucket, though it probably should be called the Respects Other Layers When Painting paint bucket tool, since that's what it does. Use that to create a white fill that just matches the size of the eyes. If need be, switch to a white brush to fill in the edges. With the white fill layer selected, add another new layer above it, place another thick black ellipse on it for the colored part of the eye, Use the regular paint bucket tool to fill it with the blue eye color. Do this before using the V tool to rotate and position it, since Sketchbook seems to have a problem filling shapes once they've been rotated. Similarly, for the pupil, create a new layer, black ellipse, fill it, and position it. Once everything is perfect, you can use Merge with Below to combine the middle layers of the eye. Then create a copy using Duplicate Layer, and then V to move it over into position. Now we can use Merge with Below to reduce all of the eye layers down onto a single layer. Create a new layer beneath the eyes layer, choose the Paintbrush tool, set it to black, go to Line Mode, then draw three eyelashes on each side. Merge with the top two layers and rename it to Eyes. Now you've got the eyes done. Next we need to draw the nose, so new layer, choose the pen tool, color black, change back to freehand mode, B to resize it up to about 4, 
For some reason, I always have trouble getting the nose right, so I like to hit the space bar and rotate the canvas slightly to match the natural movement of my hand. Then starting at the midline, draw a straight line outward and upward, overlapping the eye somewhat, then sweep it back down to the midline. We'll talk about erasing that lower edge of the eye later, but first let's do the cheek. New layer, select the red color, and switch to the chisel tip brush. Open the brush's properties, set the size to five, and the slant to around 60 degrees. Draw a half circle for the cheek that crosses the lower edge of the eye. Then switch to the paintbrush, B for resize. Set it to about five, then paint three dots for the freckles. Lastly, switch to the eraser tool, select the eyes layer, and erase back the parts that intrude into the nose and cheek. Next, we draw the mouth. Spacebar to zoom out a bit, Add a new layer, switch to the ballpoint pen tool, black color, B to resize it up to 4.0. Starting from the middle of the underside of the nose, sweep down and then over to the cheek area. Draw a little curve for the smile fold, then sweep down and back up to the teeth area. Add two rectangles for the teeth. Now create a new layer and drop it below the one we were just working on. Switch to the dark pink color of the mouth and draw two loop curves to form the tongue outline. Then select the Flood Fill All Visible Layers paint bucket and fill in the colors of the mouth. If necessary, touch up the edges of the fill. Draw the squiggly pink line under the mouth. Merge down the top layer and flood fill the teeth with white. Then merge the mouth and eyes layers to create a face layer. Next we need to move on to the body. Or is that the head? Anyway. Add a new layer, choose the paintbrush tool, select the outlines color, B to resize the brush to a little over four, then draw the outlines of the body. Actually, it's a little easier if we turn off the visibility of the face and background layers. Notice that there are four peaks on each side, not counting the corners. Next, we flood fill the body with color. Add a new layer for the holes. The holes on the face are a lighter shade than those on the side. Select the ballpoint pen tool, set the mode to oval, draw an oval for the hole. Flood fill, V to rotate scale and reposition it. Duplicate the layer, V to move and rotate to the lower left corner of the body. Do the same thing for the lower right corner. Now we start over again, this time making smaller holes. Notice that there are four small holes on the face, but three large holes. Merge the layers once they're finished. Repeat the same procedure for the darker holes on the side of the body. Now we can tackle the rest of the body. If we try to use the ballpoint pen mode set to rectangle, we'll find that it's a little tricky to get the lines lined up correctly. And if you try this in line mode, you'll see that it's difficult to keep the lines parallel to each other. Happily, Sketchbook has another feature which works well in this case, the ruler, which is actually a straight edge that locks whatever brush you are using into alignment with it so that you can't draw anywhere but along the ruler line. This has a few different control handles. The circles with the dots in them will rotate the rule around its center. The square will move the entire line, and the circle with the X in it turns the ruler off. So line up the ruler with the lower edge of the body, and use a black brush to draw the top line, then use the square control to move it down. Notice how it keeps it perfectly parallel with the previous line, making this easier, though there actually probably should be a small amount of perspective on these lines, but repeat this for the bottom line as well. For the vertical lines, I like to create a separate layer so that once they're drawn, it's easier to turn off the ruler, change to the eraser tool, and trim each line neatly back without accidentally erasing the intersecting line. Create a new layer, select the paintbrush, black color, B to resize it to about four, 
then draw two triangles for the collar, and between them draw the upper part of the tie and then the lower part of the tie. Use the flood fill brush to fill in the lower part of the tie with red, and switch to the flood fill all visible layers brush to fill the upper part of the tie. Leave the tie on its own layer for now. Add a new layer beneath it. You do this by selecting the pants layer immediately below the tie and then adding a new layer. Choose the ballpoint pen brush, set to black, rectangle mode, then draw and fill the first belt loop. V to rotate and reposition. Duplicate the layer. Use V again to reposition the copy. Repeat this for the middle belt loops, noting how they hide behind the tie. The belt loop on the side is skewed, and since Sketchbook currently does not have a skew feature, you have to draw this one yourself using the ballpoint pen brush set to line mode. Now you can merge all these layers down to a single pants layer and move it below the body layer. Now we can draw the legs. Add a new layer, paintbrush tool, black color, freehand mode, B to resize it to about 4.2, draw the rectangle for the pant leg. Fill it with brown. Add a new layer beneath the pant leg layer, use B to resize the brush down to about 3.5, switch to line mode and draw two parallel lines for the leg. Now go to freehand mode and draw the outline of the shoe. Make an oval for the white highlight, fill it with black. If this doesn't work right, you can add a new layer beneath it and use flood fill all visible layers and then merge. Draw a black curved line to divide the leg in half. Fill the top half with yellow and the bottom with white. Again, I'm using the extra layer under the outlines for this part. Lastly, draw the blue sock ring and then the red one. Merge the layers into a single layer, duplicate it, and use V to reposition it to the other side. Lastly, let's do the arms. Add a new layer, paintbrush tool, black color, B to resize it to about 4.2. The sleeve is sort of a bell shape. Fill it with white. Add a new layer underneath the sleeve layer. Use B to resize the brush down to about 3.5. Switch to line mode and draw two parallel lines for the arm. Now go to freehand mode and draw the hand. This is always the hardest part of any cartoon. Just do the best you can. When finished, fill with yellow. Merge down to make a single layer for the arm, then duplicate the layer and use V to move it to the other side. Drag the layer to below the pants layer and hide it behind them. There you go, a cartoon sponge.